Squeeze. They arrived at the same time as New Wave. And although associated with that era, Chris Difford and Glenn Tilbrook, the two frontmen of the group, feel differently about their music. With, with nothing to do with New Wave uh, and any sort of connection we have with that, which was a few years ago now, I think, has, has disappeared. I think I'd like to, pe I'd like to think that uh, people regard us as a pop band. I think pop has become something of a, of a dirty word lately and it's come to mean a lot of sort of music that I don't think it should mean. I, to me, pop bands are bands like um, the Hollies, or the Kinks, those sort of bands that were doing classy songs with classy arrangements, and that's where I think we fit in. I think um, it's been to our benefit that we've kept on hammering away and avoiding any sort of classification for ourselves. We recently had Jules Holland in the studio a few months ago, and, uh, and he kind of told us to, that Squeeze first formed while you guys were all still in high school. Well, we went to school together, and, uh, and I hated school. I mean, I really thought school was horrible, so as soon as was 15 because you can leave when you're 16 but if you just don't go in when you're 15 nobody says anything you see uh, and so we we just started playing in pubs and it was really good because I mean then I had a lot more courage than I had now because we used to just walk into pubs and if there was a piano we'd start playing and then I'd start playing the piano and he'd start playing the acoustic guitar or we'd sing Hey Jude or something really annoying and um, the landlord of the pub would have to say you know I'll have you back or at least pay us money to leave <laughs> it's like extortion really He's fibbing again. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, I remember I first met Jules when he was trying to sell uh, a guitar to a friend of mine. I didn't actually know Jules, but Jules was uh, selling this guitar for, uh, I think, about $10. And I went round Jules's house to see this particular guitar, and it wasn't worth $2. That's the sort of chap Julian is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, that, but through that, we formed a friendship and uh, then hooked up with Chris somewhere in there. And uh, it was around about the time we were all at school, yeah. How did you come up with the name Squeeze in the first place? <laughs> this is a tough one. It came out of a hat. <laughs> really? We just put five names each in, into a hat and um, someone's mother or someone pulled the name out and it was Squeeze. I mean, we could have been called a bottle of beer. <laughs> in fact, that would have been a better name, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> when Squeeze first came to America in 1978, they played a small New York club known for breaking the latest in underground music. Chris Difford talks about those early days at CBGB's. Well, I remember it very well because uh, I remember the two sets that you had to play. I think one was about nine or ten o'clock at night and the second one was about two or three and ended up about four. And uh, I used to really enjoy it for the first week, I think. And then uh, I just got more and more drunk and... Uh, Forgot what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Became like a second home for us for a while, CBGB, because we we did about uh, I think four or five residencies there over a period of a few months. Mm. That was four years ago. You've gone through an awful. Uh, this is one thing that's always amazed us. You've gone through so many different personnel changes through the years. Um, well, Jules Holland you had on keyboards, and then uh, Paul Carrick. Uh, and then, of course, now you've got uh, Don Snow in the band. That's right. Uh, can you tell us about those differences and those nuances that the changes that you go through when? Changing a keyboard player. I think when uh, Julian was in the band, he's, uh, he was more like, uh, became a comic figure. He was a bit of a Charlie Chaplin. And I think his comic role started really taking over the set of the band. But it was good. It was quite funny uh, up to a point. But I think it, it was derivatory to the music of the band, you know, the seriousness of what the music could have been then. And uh, then Julian left because I think he felt that his career could branch out from that comic strip character, I think. And then when uh, Paul joined the band, I think he brought a completely different influence in music, music, musically more r and I think. I bought a toothbrush, some toothpaste, a flannel for my face, pajamas, a hairbrush, new shoes and a case. I said to my reflection, let's get out. to his departure, especially after Tempted became uh, such a big hit for the band here. Shocked and stunned. I was shocked and stunned. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, w well, it was a complete surprise, as it was when Jules decided to leave. But I think that um, if any person feels sort of constrained within the, 
within the uh, band's framework that it's only right that they should leave. Mm -hmm. And um, all came out in the wash with getting Don Snow anyway. So yes. Now, how has the band changed now that Don Snow is, is there? Is there? Or has there been any change? Uh, yeah, we have to position the piano about six inches higher because he's, he's taller than the rest of us. Now, obviously, you two are the major contributors in the band because you're the songwriters. But musically, there must be some changes whenever you change Yeah, he's a, he's a real... He's like, uh, he trained, I think he's the only, he trained to play the piano classically and things. Mm -hmm. So that's a different influence in the band that we haven't, because we've just dragged our way up through the, through the bull rush, rushes, learning our own chords and things. Mm -hmm. Pull in muscles on the shell. Pull in muscles on the shell. Even without the classical training, Difford and Tilbrook have combined their talents to be one of the most prolific songwriting teams of the 80s. I said I'll see you later, I'll give us some old chat But it's not like that on the TV When it's called for cats, it's called for cats It's time to love romance, I just have to wear It quits us It quits us with Glenn writing the music and Chris penning the catchy lyrics, many critics have begun to compare them to the legendary songwriting team of John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Because we're just as good as that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I mean, we get asked this all the time. We used to have, like, uh, one way of answering it. And I've forgotten what it is now. I can remember it, if you like. Can you like yes. it? Well, actually, it's a very flattering comparison. <laughs> uh, the uh, Lennon and McCartney tag, but I don't think it's really justified because um, with songwriters like them, they've built their reputation up over a number of years and it's still survived, you know, the passage of time. And if we can do the same thing, then I think, you know, that's when those comparisons should be made. We uh, play a video of Tempted here because it's such a big hit. And, uh, in fact, we'd love to get all the videos that you've ever made. But do you <laughs> so plan to... I'm burning. <laughs> no. But do you plan to be uh, having a new video released? We have heard some talk about that. We were going to do a video for our new album, Sweets from a Stranger. Uh, but we didn't have time. So, no, there isn't a video for it. Mm -hmm. There was one made for black co coffee in, in bed. So you might get a chance to see that. Okay. Lucky you. <laughs> Not exactly Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, are they? <laughs>
it should be something that's given over to a dance team or a, a di director on Broadway who can carry it off. I see. Because we're too busy with the group and other projects to be able to star in it as, as, as well, you know. Yes. I think it's the major difference between the squeeze of 1978 and the squeeze of today. There are a few inches around the waist, probably. <laughs> I think we've become a little bit more mature than we, than we were in 1978. Uh, I think I know about three more chords than I did in 1978. <laughs> I think, you, you know, you obviously learn more as you go, go on from your tour, touring. It's hard to call you a new wave band. Uh, you're really quite different from, like, Gang of Four, Talking Heads, The Clash. Uh, how would you categorize your music? Well, well nothing to do with new wave uh, and any sort of connection we have with that which was a few years ago now, I think, has, has disappeared. I think I'd like to, pe I'd like to think that people regard us as a pop band. I think pop has become something of a, of a dirty word lately, and it's come to mean a lot of sort of music that I don't think it should mean. I, to me, pop bands are bands like um, the Hollies mm -hmm. or the Kinks, those sort of bands that were doing classy songs with classy arrangements, and that's where I think we fit in. Seemingly making comparisons between the songwriting team of Lennon and McCartney and uh, Tilbrook and Difford of uh, Squeeze. Why do you think they make that comparison? We get asked this all the time. We used to have like, uh, one way of answering it. <laughs> I've forgotten what it is now. Well, actually, it's a very flattering comparison, <laughs> uh, the uh, Lennon and McCartney tag, but I don't think it's really justified because um, with songwriters like them, they built their reputation up over a number of years, and it still survived. You know the passage of time. Now, if we can do the same thing, then I think you know, that's when those comparisons should be made. I think uh, you know I was quite I was quite touched when the Rolling Stone made us songwriters of the year critics mm -hmm. in their critics poll. And uh, I think from from the era of being sort of uh, classed alongside people like Lennon and McCartney, I think we've moved on now mm -hmm. into another year. We understand you have a large backlog of, of songs, unrecorded songs, at this point. Uh, is that true? Mm. Oh, yeah, there's loads of them. We've got about a thousand songs that we've written all together. We wrote, and most of them we wrote when we first started writing, because we weren't, you know, we weren't on the road or anything for the first few years we were writing together. We uh, used, to, used to spend most of the time sitting at home writing, so we've got an awful lot of songs.